I know. We got sirens outside my window, right? There they go. Okay, guys, I want to talk to you about how do you freaking know you are in ketosis? This is like the 15th video, but you guys still are asking, so I'll keep explaining. Yeah, don't. So I just had a podcast interview with two guys uh, doing um, a KetoCon next year with the amazing list, and luckily I get to be on that list but of uh, speakers. But we were talking about uh, that one was saying, oh, I'm in ketosis. I'm like, okay, he's been doing it a couple months. And I said, uh, how do you know? And he's like, I just know. And I'm like, mm, well, I've been doing this eight years and there's a lot of false positive readings out there. Let me tell you. Guys, we also talked about the accuracy of a glucometer. Now I've worked with almost 3000 people. It can be off, but Steph's got the eyeball because I have these people test their glucose every day fasted on a empty stomach. You get a lot of, and if you track that with people's energy levels and their appetite, the numbers correlate and sleep quality, the, cor the numbers will correlate. Uh, the data with the glucometer will correlate with the information of your lifestyle. What's the, so what's the deal? How do you know if you're in ketosis? You kind of don't, but the glucometer is such an amazing tool. A dual glucometer. See this sucker? This is a dual glucometer. This is a precision extra. It's made by Abbott. Monitors, glucometers. You want it to measure a glucose and ketone. Look at that, right? It should say that on the box, guys. Now. This machine, it's not 100% accurate, but most people that I test use a Precision Extra, and it's pretty darn close to what's symbolic of your blood glucose and ketones. You want your glucose to be at a under 80 or 4.4 millimolar to indicate ketosis, as long as you're not hypoglycemic. And you want your ketones to be over one really sweet spot, a 1.8 to a 3.0. Once your ketones start getting too high, they kind of spill over the glass and what spills over becomes unusable. So when you start getting ketones at a four and a five, you'll start feeling tired and not sleeping well. You can really, really see with the ketone range, right? Viable ketone range, your energy levels and your appetite. One of the things that shows you're starting to use ketones is the lack of appetite. But just because you are not hungry does not mean you are highly adapted. A lot of you guys are still getting this wrong. Yes. Okay. So what happens, the things that happen, you go through like this really wonky keto phase, oh, keto flu phase, which could be like, headaches and muscle cramps and dry eyes and rashes and you know heart palpitations from low potassium and low blood pressure from not enough water and sodium and um, uh, some people become hypoglycemic and shaky uh, exhaustion tiredness like there's a whole hist 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 can I talk list of symptoms um, people will wonder why they smell like metallic or their breath is fruity or metallic or their BO smells funky. That's that wonky phase, right? Or the blood sugar shoots up real high and you have this insulinemic lemia. You're having this insulin response. Can I talk today? I don't think so. Uh, insulinogenic response, you know, and blood sugar's high and it wasn't high before and now you're showing like insulin resistance and this reactive insulin resistance and all these kind of, the, the, your hair starts falling out and your sex drive drops. It's like, that's the keto flu. And the more that you try to do things the wrong way and keep cheese and nuts and stay up late and not eat enough fat, eat 1200 calories and count your calories and over exercise and you know, all, once you keep trying to do all that stuff and use like sugar, alcohols and multitol and xylitol and you know, almond flour and crappy nuts, you know, you're really, really compromising your adaptation. Uh, so you have to really work incredibly hard to cross that bridge over to ketosis land. 
it's the end of the day people this is like the fourth video i'm just saying um you have to cross that bridge over to ketosis land to actually uh, reap the benefits of your keto adaptation so the problem is you guys are um because you see weight on a scale i know it's sirens that's my brand right Woo! pull over um anyway uh the problem is that uh, there's all this like kind of like false false positive like crazy misunderstandings of what it is to actually keto adapt because people see that there's weight loss on a scale first of all i want to say um being keto adapted does not mean that weight's going to come off it doesn't weight comes off once you are highly adapted or in nutritional ketosis not that you're making ketones that you're they're viable you can have perfect glucometer numbers and still be wasting ketones. You're making them because they're in the blood, but you're also wasting them. That's a very rare occasion that the numbers are great, but you still are tired. A lot of you guys have adrenal insufficiencies and that's why you crash in the afternoon. That's why you're tired in the morning. That's why you're wired at night. So how do you know if you're in ketosis? Well, obviously do all the work, do all the work, take out all the allergenic food. Pay attention to see if you have any histamine response. See if you're bloated on any foods, right? See if you have loose stools. See if MCT oil or coconut oil is making you have loose stools. See if stool. See if your gallbladder is reacting. You feel extra bloated from eating all that fat because you could have gallbladder issues and not even know it. You could have low stomach acid and not, not even know it and not be able to digest certain fatty meats and steak and fatty and pork and you may not be able to digest these foods or just animal fats. It's kind of funny, like some people have gallbladder issues and they're like, oh, do I use ox bile? And I'm like, yes. Um, people have no gallbladder, yes, use the ox bile. But some people just um, have low stomach acid and that comes from often not eating enough protein and being vegetarian or coming from the vegan world. And then you're introducing these proteins and the body's like, I don't have the material to digest this. So I'm gonna make you feel bloated and awful and not crave these foods like, ooh, ah. Uh. Once you do your due diligence and you get your digestive system moving and motility and you get your gut biome and bacteria more in control and you're paying attention to candida symptoms and you're paying attention to your sleep and you're, you're breathing, you're diaphragmatic breathing, you're meditating and you quit all the stim stimulants and now and you're really, really high in your fat and moderate to low in your protein and vegetable carbohydrates coming from cruciferous vegetables primarily then and stop eating all these awful recipes on on the internet that are not keto i keep looking at people's food charts and it is not keto i don't know what they're doing but that is not keto that's like starvation or the intermittent fasting once you start getting rid of all that crap and you actually learn how to adapt then we can start talking about regulating your blood sugar and regulating your insulin because if your blood sugar is high, you're not going to adapt. Your body is gonna to go to that primary source of fuel that it's known its whole, its whole existence. It's not, the, it's not the human primary source of fuel, but it's what your body has, has become used to using. We're trying to get it to switch over to making ketones. So I don't know where in the stupid diet trend, people think that they're gonna lose weight and they're not even adapted. This isn't the, uh, the Atkins diet, this is something higher level this is not paleo people this is get your body into a state of ketosis so you can be more anabolic rather than catabolic which i think is going to be my next video you know that you're in ketosis when you do everything that it takes to cross that bridge to be disciplined to be strict this is not for the faint at heart this is for strong ass mother suckers, not people who want to do something 60% because that's the result you're going to get. And if you lose 20 pounds in a month, that is water and that is muscle and that is a bink of fat, but that is not keto. That is not ketogenesis. You guys are going to feel hunger go down. You're going to feel the crashing end, the sleeping going to REM state cycles and vivid dreams start. The inflammation is going to go down. The constipation that was up once you're adapted goes down. Your thyroid symptoms will regulate. Men, your testosterone will spike and all of a sudden you can hold a woody again. And women, the estrogen dominance begins to cool off. Your hot flashes, right? Your issues, your skin issues begin to cool off. 
It's fantastic. Yes, you got energy, 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 because I got energy all day. It's the end of the day, and I got me some energy, and I've been going since 5.30 this morning. You have the energy. You see the skin repair, right? You have the gains in the gym, right? You have the gains. You do, because you're less catabolic, and your insulin and your glucose becomes regulated. It's way more than just... Oh my God, I'm losing weight because that's subjective, right? Do a DEXA scan if you really want to know your body fat percentage because that's really what it is. It's not about calories and it's not about weight on a scale. I gained 15 pounds on keto. I gained 50, 15 pounds at nearly 50. It is crazy how much weight I gained in muscle. <sighs> yes, you're connected to the circadian rhythm and your menstrual cycle is on point, correct. And like I said, men, your little andropause and your moodiness and your depression starts to go down. Violent behavior, you know, your OCD, your um, anxiety. That's how you know. If you guys wanna learn more, you can go to stephanieperson.com. I'm having talks now. I'm having one in New York in November. I'm going to Sweden October 1st. So for all the Swedes out there who still are interested in getting a ticket in Stockholm, snälla gå och söka på min website or kanske uh, shop and billions. Um, it's, it's going to be fantastic for me. Um, and I still am offering um, um, downloadable diets that come from you guys, from coaching 3,000 people and learning a lot about histamine intolerance, people who've got hypoglycemia, all these types of, of issues, or average to fit people, or people who are ready for Steph's version of intermittent fasting, which is to break the fast actually. Um, I also have my Facebook fan page, my um, Periscopes, which is Steph the Business. My Facebook fan page is Stephanie the Business Person. Uh, Steph the Business is also for Twitter, and I'm out. Enough of this social media crap. Booyaka! And I got some energy, and I love life, and I love the keto existence. Nothing is good as keto feels. Bam!